Hey guys, it's TechRan here and welcome back to another review video. Today we'll be reviewing the M2 Mac Mini. That is right. If you guys did not know, I recently picked this up in the last week because I plan to do a bunch of videos with it and I also want to test the Mac Mini, see if it can actually stream, can a video edit, and all that other jazz and see if it's actually a really good actual mini PC as a lot of reviews are saying because I see these reviews on the Mac Mini. I'm like, it must be an insane PC. So that's the question we're gonna figure out here today. So what I got here is actually the base model of the Mac Mini, but the one difference between the base model and this one is that I upgraded the RAM from the eight gigs the 16 gigs of unified memory. So everything else is the same though. It's got eight actual CPU cores, 10 GPU cores, and also has a 256 gigabyte uh, drive on board for actual storage. So not a whole lot of storage though, but then again, I'm only gonna put on the main applications like OBS, DaVinci Resolve, and those ones, which don't take too much space. And maybe like one or two video editing projects, but usually I'll be editing off a side loader. So it doesn't really matter, but let's get into the unboxing. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick glance at the box. So here's how the front of it looks, which looks pretty nice, nothing too insane. The actual editing jig on stuff is nothing too fancy. It says like Mac mini on the top and also on the bottom. And by size that though, we actually got the back side of it, which you can see there's a peel here for the actual unboxing and some other information about the actual Mac mini. So let's get into the unboxing bar. All we have to do is take the slip, pull it like so. I also just realized there's another slip on the bottom too. So we've got to remove that. But now you can see it's slipping on out. It's actually like slipping on out, like without absolute ease. Like it was doing itself. With that though, you can see empty box here, nothing really on the top, but in the actual Mac mini, we can slide this on out here. We got some cables first. First of all, we get a power cable that powers via, you know, the normal power adapter, which is pretty good. It's got a little weird packaging to it though. Just something to keep in mind. I'm just gonna set that aside because it's kind of a hassle and tangle. A manual for the Mac mini with, yeah, that's about it with a little sticker for the Apple device. But here's the Mac mini in itself with a nice little peel around it. So we can make, unpeel this right here. With that, you get access to the device throughout the rip, which honestly, looking at this thing when you first get it, looks pretty good. Like it isn't anything too insane, but like, yo, it's got a nice body, nice chassis. It looks very high quality. So it's got like a little black coating on the backside here, protecting the actual IO. Because of the actual IO, what you get, once you remove that here, you get a few things. So the first thing you get, of course, is the power area for powering the actual Mac mini. You also get a one gigabyte ethernet, which is pretty nice. You get two actual Thunderbolt 4 ports, which is pretty nice, nothing too insane. Uh, one HDMI, this is supposedly 2.1, unless otherwise I'm wrong. And also two USB 3.1 actual ports for actually supporting any USB devices. Supposedly, I thought these were gonna be like USB 3.2, but they're USB 3.1, which is kind of weird to me. I don't know why, because most devices now are USB 3.2, which is kind of annoying for some storage drives. And a 3.5 audio head jack for like putting a head jack uh, headset in. So yeah, that's the IO and then the cooling for the back because this does have active cooling for it compared to like the MacBooks and MacBooks Air where they have passive cooling. And yeah, my cat's on my desk now too. But those are of course the ports. I will say though, the build quality of this thing looks very premium. It has a little back plate here too that like kind of hold it in place. You want to sit it on down. So that way this is how it looks like when you kind of have it set on up on your desk, which honestly isn't anything too crazy. Looks very minimal though. So what we're gonna do now is set this on up and test it to see how it actually performs. Okay, so I got the Mac mini all set up and good to go. Surprisingly, the installation process is just really straightforward. There wasn't like a bunch of things you had to click. It was actually quite swift to set up. But what we're gonna do now is actually a physical test of it. The first thing we're gonna do is a streaming test because I'm having a video, few videos coming out actually for like how to set up a Mac mini or Mac for actually OBS, Streamlabs, and also like how to multi-stream with it. But my question is, how will the performance look like with that? So what we have set up here is the following. We have OBS installed and with OBS, we're actually running uh, two things. First of all, this is the multi-stream plugin on top of OBS, so that means we're going to stream to Twitch, 1080p, 6,000 bit rate with the actual hardware encoder, and then we're going to do the exact same thing, but of course, 1080p, 6,000 bit rate to kick. So we're going to be streaming to two different platforms, similarity at the exact same time, and I want to see how much of a performance impact this will actually do. Because right now, it doesn't look like we're actually taking too much performance. We go to actually the activity feed. We're only using 10.14 uh, gigs of the memory out of 16. So like there's still like six gigs left. And usually my computer would be already using like 14 gigs. So that's kind of goes to show you unified memory, how close it is can actually 
process the actual information faster, which is nice. But my question is now, how will the actual results look like when we start streaming with it? So we're currently live on Twitch, which is good to see, but now how about Kick? Are we live on Kick? Okay, we're live on Kick as well. So what we're gonna do now is some gaming and kind of just test with it to see how it actually performed. Surprisingly, the RAM right up didn't go up by much. We went by like 0.30, so that's interesting. So yeah. What we're also gonna do on top of the whole streaming thing, we're actually gonna record in the background too, so that way we can actually see like how the recording looks like as well. <laughs> My camera's being stupid. Now the only thing to keep in mind is that I am using a uh, uh, third-party capture card for like a uh, USB, so it's the direct capture. I'm not using any of my H260Ss or any of my normal Elgato capture cards because I was noticing with Mac, I was having some problem where they weren't like allowing me to use them properly, which isn't the worst in the world, just kind of annoying that I couldn't get them to properly work. But yeah, I tried to figure out the problem with the Elgato capture cards to get them like to work properly with it. But I, whatever I did to try to figure it out, it just did not work. So I decided to use some plug and play capture cards because those don't require any software or anything special to it. So I was like, oh, this will just work perfectly fine. Of course, plug and play just work. I didn't have to do anything with like Elgato with the software. So that's nice. I would say though, I, if I had the Elgato capture card set up and I could figure that on out, it'd probably be way better recording quality and also like zero lag. Okay, so, so far with the dual stream going, we are using around 11 to 10 gigs of unified memory. We haven't really dipped into the other uh, six gigs, which is kind of insane to think about, or five gigs. Okay, so next up we got DaVinci Resolve. I have to set this on up. I got the footage from earlier from when we streamed a little while ago. I'm kind of curious to see like how this actually looks. I'm actually on the wrong thing. We need to put this on edit. Where if I actually was to screen record and show you guys the timeline, we're now recording at 10,000 bit rate, 1080p. And then we do the playback too. You can see like how it looks. It honestly, playback wise, isn't that bad. I'm not entirely sure where this link effect came from, to be honest with you guys. I'm still confused about that. But besides the point though, it is playing back pretty good. And if I was actually like edit on this too, I could probably have no problem with it at all. But I'm at the same time too, I'm not entirely sure. So we'll do a little bit of editing. I'm kind of curious though. Let's just cool, take a quick gander how much like it's using right now. We're only using eight gigs of the unified memory on the actual system right now. We're not using any more than that. If you're multitasking with the Mac mini, 16 gigs is the way to go. But if you're not multitasking, having multiple applications in the background, and you're only doing like one or two things at a time, then yeah, I would I would go eight gigs, but like for me personally, since I do a lot of stuff in the background, 16 gigs is perfectly adequate. The only thing I need to do is I want to test it to see if we can actually edit off the Mac mini from external bay. So let's say we have like the 256 gig drive we have on this thing. It's good, it's slow, but it works. Can I set up a actual NAS system, pull the information from that and off that onto the Mac mini? I feel like that would be best use case scenario instead of like having to buy like the upgraded version of the drive, which is like the two terabyte or the terabyte is like $800. It's like, not a good idea uh, spending your money because you spend like a quarter of that money. If you spend like $200, you can literally get five terabytes of actual storage, which I will have, I'm gonna have a few links down below in the description that can have you a complete Mac mini setup for one, a actual flash drive for like one terabyte so that way you can edit off of it. And then you can actually get a 2.5 uh, hard drive for five terabytes, so that's six terabytes altogether of external storage to actually use in the Mac mini. And you just connect that via Blender Board 4. And then you of course have like the internal storage on the Mac mini, which is really good already. Putting your main applications on it. Then you could of course record onto like the one terabyte drive for the flash. And then you can set up a script to send the information from that to the five terabyte drive where you can just send the five terabyte drive when you're not using the uh, actual stuff. So that's what I have in my main system. I have a script set up. I'll probably apply this script onto my Mac Mini. And if you guys do want to see a video on how to like to make my script I use for like pulling information, then let me know in the comments down below because I would download the share that. I also want to say this, after we did our streaming test, streaming the multiple platforms with the actual Mac Mini, I went back to look at the feed to see how the feed actually looks. And surprisingly, the Mac Mini can easily handle two streams at once, streaming to multiple platforms. Like it actually just destroyed them both 1080p. Like here's a Twitch stream. We could actually see how crisp it is. It looks really very nice. Honestly, high quality. Then we look at the Kick one. It looks pretty good. Kick has their encodec not entirely there yet, but like you can see it still looks really nice. My big thing with it is though, like you could probably do more than just two actual platforms with this actual uh, you define memory. We could probably even do a third like YouTube as well, stream to even more platforms than that, maybe even four, but Two is the minimum I'd say most people will do, but I can definitely say with confidence if we started streaming to like YouTube, Kick, and Twitch with the Mac Mini as a stream PC, it'd easily be able to do it. Now, would I recommend streaming with the Mac Mini and gaming on it? Probably not, because Rosetta isn't particularly the best. It's like a kind of third-party thing, and also it takes a lot of 
usage so like definitely not going to be recommended but like if you want to game on it you can definitely game on it however if you were to set this up on console that's where the best thing would be at because you have the mac mini or macbook or macbook air as your stream pc then connect it for your capture card to your console and then you can stream that way and it'd be really high quality without like having to like get a whole new pc or something that's something else you can just use like your mac so I just finished up editing a full clip of Valorant for my Twitch stream and actually turned it into a two minute and 30 second game video. Uh, and so this is kind of just a general, just like what you would see performance wise if you were to render it out. This was like a two minute, 33 second game. It rendered out in 31 seconds, which is honestly not bad. It was pretty fast. And if you do something a little bit more complex, it would probably take another like minute or two. So I'm actually kind of surprised at how fast it actually rendered. So that's good to say. But here's a kind of like a look of it and how you actually see your gameplay when you deliver it to actually the final product. Now keep in mind, I didn't have the render settings completely there. It's actually supposed to be 60 FPS, but I just rendered it to 30. Uh, that was my bad. I'm not entirely sure why I couldn't fix it in actually uh, DaVinci, but you get the general gist though. It looks pretty good. But if you are someone who uses DaVinci Resolve, definitely using it on this Mac will actually be really good because the playback's honestly pretty nice and also the render time's pretty quick. And of course, if you actually know what you're doing too, it honestly might even be better. Uh, but yeah, this is not my main application. So like, but yeah, the Mac Mini M2, what do I recommend using it in 2024? Honestly, if you are looking to get a Mac product, supposedly the M3 Macs are not gonna come for a little while. Like they're gonna get the Mac Studio and most likely some other stuff. But I don't think we're gonna get a Mac Mini for a minute. So I think if the Mac Mini or M3 Mac Mini comes out and it's a similar to like the where the M3 laptops are right now because the Airs, if you already have an M2 and M1, there's no reason like an M3. I think it's gonna be a similar situation for like the M3 Mac Studio or M3 Minis. So it's gonna be like better off. You're just gonna probably buy this refurbished or a secondhand market for an M2 Mac Mini or when they actually start selling them on the refurbished because like usually anything Apple gets and they just don't sell, they put on refurbished. So like you'll maybe send some more money and get it that way. So what I recommend buying Mac Mini M2 and 2024. I don't know. If you are someone who's looking to get a Mac Mini, you need a powerhouse and a small system to take it on the go. Absolutely. I actually plan to use this to make a portable setup for the Mac Mini. So if you do want to see a video on that, let me know by smashing the like button because I got the whole thing planned out already. More just a matter of me just executing it now. That's my big use case for it. But if you're someone who already has like a really good system, there's no real reason to get into M Mini if you already have a, like already a powerful PC system. However, if you do have $800 and you're just looking to get a small system to do video editing, Photoshop and productivity applications, honestly, the Mac Mini is not a bad option in all fairness. So yeah, that's my final thoughts about it though. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed to some of this future tech content. I'll see you guys when I'm on TechRant. Out.